The Jolly Balloon Man has some creepy freaky art. Dude's just like blowing up heads. But the card looks like a ton of fun, even though it's a clown and it's... Mm, but so much fun. You tap it, pay a mana, make a token copy of a creature you control, except it's a 1-1 one, one flying balloon. And it's got haste and this, and you sack the balloon in the end step, also the commander's got haste. Super cool card. And there are some really sweet synergies you can do in this deck. First of all, I want to talk about an infinite combo that you can just like outright win the game with. And it all revolves around one card. And that card is Village Bellringer. When it enters the battlefield, untap all creatures you control. So if you have a card like Goldmere, you can tap Goldmere to pay the mana for Jolly Balloon Man to make a token copy of Village Bellringer. The token will enter as a 1-1 flying haste creature and untap all creatures you control, including the Goldmere and the Jolly Balloon Man. You can just do that again and again and again. Similarly, you can use Ashnod's Altar to sacrifice a token to make two colorless mana. You can then activate the Balloon Man again, creating a new token, untapping the Balloon Man, tapping it again with the other mana from the Ashnod's Altar, making another token, and sacrificing one of the two tokens to repeat that process. And the third way to do it is Mana Echoes. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, add an amount of mana equal to the number of creatures that share a creature type with it. So the Ashnod's Altar and the Mana Echoes versions also net you infinite colorless mana, which is pretty good, and just can win you the game with 1-1 one, one Hasty Flyers. I'm going to change up the order a little bit from how I usually do these first thoughts videos, and I'm going to do the one-off cards now, as opposed to the end of the video, because the one-off cards tend to talk about some of the very, very cool synergistic cards for the deck, and not everybody sees that because they don't stick around till the end. So I want to make sure people see the one-off cards, because they're my favorite section. You can throw in Delny to copy any triggers from the tokens that you're making because they're under a two-power creature. Duke Older Raven Guard seems perfect for the deck. This deck is all about getting value off of making tokens of creatures, Duke can just make you two tokens of a creature every combat. Echoing Assault to give your tokens Menace to ensure they get in. Menace Flyers are really hard to block. But more importantly, they can create an additional token for you. Felden of the Third Path can let you access your graveyard to bring something back essentially that you want to make more tokens of. So that way you can get more triggers. Flame Shadow Conjuring, another way to make some additional tokens. Halo Fountain is kind of a cool win con. And it can untap the Jolly Balloon Man, so that way you can activate Jolly Balloon Man again. Jaxus seems perfect for the deck, making extra tokens and also drawing your cards. Ortheon, similar, more token creation. Sneak Attack seems awesome for this deck, because you're going to have a lot of high cost creatures that are going to be high value to copy. If you can sneak attack them in, then you can just really reduce the cost of these cards by a significant amount. And the haste is nice. And Sundial of the Infinite. The way this works with Jolly Balloon Man is you activate Jolly Balloon Man, go to combat, whatever, you make your token, you go to your end step, and Jolly Balloon Man says, hey, you gotta sacrifice that token. In response to that trigger, you can activate Sundial of the Infinite to end your turn, and that trigger just goes away. And so, that token does not get sacrificed, you get to keep it. Moving on, let's talk about some of the creatures you could throw into this deck to copy with the Jolly Balloon Man. There's a lot of really good value creatures that would work great in this deck, both for dealing combat damage and having triggers, attacking and having triggers, or enters the battlefield triggers, stuff like that. Some of those include Aerial Extortionist, being able to essentially bounce permanence and then draw you cards seems awesome. And it has the extra value of if your opponents have like a Prosper deck, then you'll be able to get, draw additional cards. Ancient Copper Dragon along with Ancient Gold Dragon are fantastic for this deck. It doesn't matter how big the creature is, it just needs to deal one damage and then you're rolling a d20 and you're getting a bunch of treasures and a bunch of tokens. Balor is pretty cool because it's whenever it attacks or dies, so you make a token copy of it, you're going to get the attack trigger, and then the sack trigger, so you're going to be able to do the abilities twice. Battle Angels of Tear can provide a ton of value. Brea's Apprentice is pretty cool. It enters and makes a Thopter, 
and you can tap it to sacrifice an artifact and do some stuff. So one of the nice things is that if you have Barrier's Apprentice in play and you choose to make a token copy of Barrier's Apprentice, you'll get a Thopter, you'll get the token copy, and you can sacrifice the token copy to the original Bray's Apprentice to activate Bray's Apprentice instead of it just being sacrificed. So that's pretty nice. Cavalier of Dawn, ETB, you beast within a non-land permanent, and then when it dies, you return an artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. So you can just repeatedly blow things up and get things back. Cavern Horde Dragon can generate a ton of treasures. Cityscape Leveler for more removal. Cloud Goat Ranger is pretty cool just because of the amount of tokens you can make with this. Dockside Extortionist is a no-brainer. Goldspan Dragon can generate you some extra treasures, plus it makes so your treasures can tap for double. Hallowed Spirit Keeper, if you end up with some creatures in your graveyard, this can generate a ton of tokens, especially when you're doing it over and over and over again. Hellkite Tyrant, steal two players artifacts, love that. Also just a cool alternate win con. Humble Defector becomes a cool card advantage engine. Inferno Titan is just removal on a stick. It's got ETB and attacks triggers, which is amazing in this deck. So that means you're dealing six damage in total, divided as you choose. Similarly, you have Overlord of the Mistmoors, ETB or attacks, you create two 2-1 two, flyers. And you can pay this for four mana with impending four. So you wait a little bit to be able to copy it, but you get it in play earlier. Ranger Captain of Eos can get you whatever cards you really need, plus you can sacrifice it, which is a pretty nice upside. Sanctuary Warden, perfect for this deck. ETBs with two shield counters on it, and when it enters or attacks, you may remove a counter from a creature or planeswalker you control. If you do, you draw a card and make a 1-1. So you make a copy of it with Balloon Man, it'll enter with two shield counters on it. ETB trigger, remove a shield counter, draw a card, make a 1-1. Then you attack with the token copy, and boom, you remove a shield counter, draw a card, and make another 1-1. One, one. Skyclave Apparition is a great removal spell. Sun Titan can get your stuff back. Uvara Hellkite can just pump out dragons. And Worm Coil Engine can poop out worms. Since this deck revolves around making token copies of creatures, token synergies seem like a no-brainer addition for this deck. Some good token synergy cards you can add in include Anointed Procession, Mondrak, and O'Hare Tak to create additional tokens. Being able to triple your tokens with O'Hare Tak is amazing. Kadrick is pretty cool because the legend rule doesn't apply to tokens you control, and then it can also generate you some additional tokens. But this lets you copy certain creatures that you wouldn't be able to copy easily otherwise. There's a handful of cards that populate that seem really worthwhile because it lets you copy those tokens like Determined Iteration, Gearhead's Belligerence, Muster the Departed, Nesting Dovehawk, Song of the World Soul, and Wake the Reflections. Idle Oblivion, along with Welcoming Vampire, are two good card draw engines. And Naali's Sun's Vanguard. This is a perfect card for this deck. Imagine you have an Ancient Copper Dragon in play. You, and now it's double strike, the token. So you get that roll of d20 twice. Amazing. Plus it's card advantage. Since the tokens are gonna be sacrificed at your end step anyways, you could throw in some cards that you can use as sack outlets so you can sacrifice them for a benefit instead of them just going away for nothing. Some good sack outlets include Broadside Bombardiers, just targeted removal. Fountain Port to draw you cards on a land. Goblin Bombardment, more targeted damage. Lazatep Query turns into a two-colored land, but it's still a sack outlet, which is pretty decent. Plus, it lets you eternalize a creature in your graveyard if you need to, which you can then copy with Jolly Balloon Man, so it works really well in the deck. Phyrexian Altar for additional mana. And Shivan Harvest, blow up some non-basic lands. Love that. Since the Jolly Balloon Man gives flying to the creature tokens, it's going to be unlikely that you're in a situation where you're going to be at combat and not be able to deal damage to at least one player. So there are some good cards that net you things when you deal damage to opponents. Some of those include Coveted Jewel. I really like this card in this deck. It can be a cool political tool. It's a lot of ramp and it can draw a ton of cards. Curse of Hospitality to steal your opponent's stuff. Grenzo Havoc Razor has a lot of utility. Professional Facebreaker for some treasures. 
The swords like Sword of Feast and Famine, perfect. And the Reaver Cleaver. The Reaver Cleaver works best when you're throwing it onto the creature that you're making the token of. Like the original, like the actual ancient copper dragon or something like that. This deck is all about making token copies and activating the Jolly Balloon Man. So you want to activate him as much as possible. There are some ways that you can activate him more than once a turn. For example, you can untap the Jolly Balloon Man so you can tap him again. Some ways to untap the Jolly Balloon Man include Mage Rite Stone, Petrier's Seal, which is nice because it's also a mana rock, Puppet Strings, Sting, and Thousand Year Elixir. In a similar vein, you could copy the actual ability on the stack as opposed to untapping and retapping. Some ways you can copy the ability include Argus Koss, Eternal Soldier. Awesome card for this deck. Battle Mage's Bracers, along with Illusionist Bracers, Earth of Joe, Lithoform Engine, and Rings of Bright Hearth. A lot of the good cards to copy with the Jolly Balloon Man are creatures that do something when they attack or deal damage. So more combats mean more triggers. That's a good thing. Some of the ways to get additional combats include Aggravated Assault, which can end up being an infinite combo piece with the right setup. Aurelia the War Leader, Combat Celebrant. That one's really nice because making token copies of it can go infinite. Great Train Heist and seize the day. Last category I wanted to mention, one way that people are going to be building this deck is all about ETB triggers, enters the battlefield triggers. So if you're gonna go that route, you might as well run some blink cards. So cards like Lazelle's Acrobatics, Nahiri's Resolve, Preston the Vanisher, and Panharmonicon would be auto includes in that type of build. That is everything I have for the Jolly Balloon Man. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Peace out, everybody.